Well, hello. Um, this is a uh, model that was posted on the SolidWorks forum, and uh, and somebody asked how you blend out um, this sharp edge to this curvature continuous surface. And, and one of the things that SolidWorks has a hard time with this, if you have two uh, an edge that is curvature continuous, the, the fill tool doesn't know how to blend it out. It sort of resolves to nothing. Um, I've recreated this. I don't know how the original one was built, but I sort of recreated it based on what I saw. And then if you run the fill tool, you'll see that it tapers to nothing. Um, and that's not ideal. It doesn't create very good looking geometry. It, it also causes a singularity where all the control points bunch together and that can create problems with like offsetting, shelling and, and other subsequent operations. Plus, you end up with these sliver surfaces. So if you have to build geometry that goes through this later, these slivers can really cause headaches when you're trying to, you know, get, you know, stuff to be curvature continuous or, or have fillets to run through that. So, you know, I wouldn't consider this an ideal solution. Um, and, you know, so I'll just go over how, how I would build this. And, and also, the one that was posted with the sharp edge, like you end up with the three-sided surface here. And if I go back in there and we turn on the, uh, the, the mesh preview for that, you'll see that all the all the control points sort of converge on this one edge and it also gets like pretty wavy through here. Um, and th that waviness just doesn't create very good geometry if I turn off one direction. You know, there's, it, there's some inflection in there. It, this is just not a great way of, of building it in, in my way. So, um, you know, how would I go about it? Well, I love building to theoretical edges. Um, this, you know, if you have this edge flow in your model and you have this theoretical edge that you can evaluate, it gives you a really good sense of like proportions. But in some cases, overbuilding and trimming back is a better solution. And I believe that this is one of those instances. So if I go back in here, I've got the same reference surfaces set up and we're going to build the uh, primary surfaces, but we're not going to build them to a theoretical edge. Rather, we're going to overbuild one surface, and then the other one we're going to follow closely to theoretical edge, and then we're going to trim them back and, and build a blend surface in between them. Uh, so starting off, pretty easy. Uh, you can use a boundary surface, one direction, two direction, uh, both tangent. Yeah, good enough. And that gives me a nice four-sided patch that is really well behaved. Um, the zebra stripes run really smoothly, so this is a, a nice, smooth, surface. So that's one. So now I want to build this next surface and I need a fourth edge here. Um, and that edge, the, you know, the, the structure of that edge and, and the look of that edge is important because I'm going to use that edge to drive my trim surfaces. Um, one of the ways of doing it is by doing a 3D sketch and inserting a style spline and then clicking this and that. So now I have a style spline that just ended up in space. This is the control cage for the style spline. If the control cage is collinear with an edge of a surface, um, it makes the, the spline tangent to that surface as well. So by making this collinear, this is now tangent to that surface. And we can do the same on this end, uh, making that collinear. And so now we have this surface that is um, this spline that is tangent to this end and that end. And I want something that is close to this surface. And so I can go in and I can tweak these guys a little bit. Move that back a little bit. And so now I have something that is pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim it back. And you know we can play with this shape uh, later on and, and optimize it to define our shape. So we have this fourth edge now and we can build this surface in between. And I'm going to use a boundary surface again. Uh, I use a boundary surface a lot because it builds four-sided patches and I do that a lot. So pick both directions and then select the curve and this edge. I'm going to turn off the curve cones because we're kind of getting in the way right now. And then we make these tangent um, to the faces that we have here. And we can already see by the mesh preview, this results in a pretty smooth result. There's a little bit of a wobble in here, which we can probably fix, but for the demonstrations of this video, I'm going to leave it at is. It's pretty minor and it looks really good. And so now we have this structure set up 
um, with uh, two surfaces that are almost perfectly intersecting. But this curve that we created, this 3D curve, um, is really smooth because it's a blend curve essentially that we filled manually. Um, and if we turn on the curvature combs, we can see that we have a really nice, smooth uh, blend here. And it follows this surface pretty closely. So now that we have this guy, I am going to use, build another surface with a loft and then trim that, use that to trim it back. So here, let's just say we want to start off at 12 and accept that. And then on the right plane here, I'm going to do a slightly larger, let's do 18. And so now I have everything I need to build my trim surface. And if we use the lofted surface, we need two profiles, so profile one and profile two. And you'll see this option here with centerline parameters. This will try to follow, um, I lost my curve here, turn that on, um, pick that out of the tree. So now we, we use that 3D curve as the centerline parameter and it's trying, the, the surface is trying to follow that curve as the center line, except that. So now we have this trim surface that will allow us to trim back these two primary slabs and open up a four-sided gap. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I like doing it with a split line and then deleting uh, the geometry that I don't need. So, you know, I, I use this as a cutting body and then I trim the other ones back. And so now we can just delete the faces that we don't want. And those are these three guys. And so now I have this four-sided opening that we can build a transition surface in between. Now, you might be tempted to just use a boundary surface in between these guys. And I find that for some reason that never gives me the result that I'm looking for. Um, and I'll show you uh, why that is in a second. If I make them both tangent, you'll have this sort of flat uh, curve here. And I want it to be more smooth, more rounded. So rather than just throwing a boundary in between there, we're going to create some reference geometry. Um, and I'm using style splines again, and I'm going to snap to this. And I'm using a style spline with three control points. You can use more control points if you want to have more control over that. Um, I, want to, I want to hide these guys. So hold on for a second. I'm going to hide that guy and go back in the sketch. Um, Unscript it so you'll get to see um, how I built this and uh, you get to enjoy the mistakes that I make. So I, I just hit it to make it easier to apply the, uh, the constraints that I want. And so now I know that it's, uh, it's tangent to this surface and it's tangent to that surface. And that is a, that's what I want. And then on the, I'm going to hide this one appropriately on the right plane, throw in another style spline. Um, and I don't, I didn't constrain them right, right away. I, oftentimes I just throw it in the space and then constrain manually. I find that the auto constraint oftentimes uh, will constrain to geometry. In a busy model, it'll constrain to stuff that I don't want to constrain to and then I have to go in, delete the constraints and reapply them. So I find it easier to just throw it in space and then apply the constraints manually. So now I have this nice four-sided boundary that I can fill. Um, and I'm going to fill it with the boundary surface. And so here I'll show you again, if I start with the first direction and I make them both tangent, you'll see that it, it flattens out. It doesn't follow this crown at all. And I want it to be more round. I want to have a smoother transition between the two surfaces. And so this, this reference geometry that I've created is going to help me build that crown in between uh, these two surfaces and, and follow that along more closely. So. Oh. And then I didn't want to do that, that changed accidentally. And so the other thing that I found is that when you have transitions like this that are trimmed back, um, on this edge, increasing the tangent to influence to 100% gives me 9 out of 10 times a better result. So I'm going to go with that. And so now we have this four-sided blend here that looks really clean. Um, and I think it's going to give us a really, really good result. Um, and you, you, you'll notice that I have a lot of surface area here, and this is really nicely uh, blended into these two surfaces. And it, it gives me room to transition that fillet into these adjacent surfaces. So if I go back in here, and if you look at the 
the control point structure in the mesh preview here, you'll see that this is very nicely behaved. And I got rid of that con those converging control points at the edge. I have a really nice structure all the way through this surface. So if we knit that together, we can evaluate mathematically how far off we are from uh, perfect. So let's see the edge deviation here. And you'll see here that we are off uh, 12 hundredths of a degree as the maximum deviation. That's pretty acceptable in my book. Uh, in my everyday modeling, I usually go by, if it's less than half a degree, it's acceptable. The manufacturing process typically wipes out anything that's less than half a degree uh, anyway. Uh, depending on what you do, um, but for for my for what I do, this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and then on the other edge, let's calculate that. We're seeing a maximum deviation of two hundredths of a degree, so mathematically almost perfect. So we know that it's mathematically close to perfect. But you know, what does this look like with highlights? Well, if you throw a zebra map on here, if the zebras transition without weird waves and bumps and jagginess through the transition area, you're in good shape. And so here you can see, even though mathematically it wasn't perfect, with the zebra stripe, we're not able to de detect if there are any mistakes. Now you'll, you'll also notice that as we creep up and go to this sharper edge, we do get a, tra a change in, um, in zebra stripes. And quite honestly, like that's exactly what we want with this sort of transition. The, what that indicates is that we have this like basically crease where the highlight will follow this crease. And then once it approaches the curvature, curvature continuity, the, the, the surfaces that are curvature con continuous, it'll wash out. And you can see that with the highlights traveling here, like it travels along this edge. And then when it hits here, it just sort of fades out into nothing. Um, and so this is a really nice result. Um, and this is, you know, kind of how I would build this. And, and the reason that these edges are really nice and smooth is because we use this sketch rather than the intersecting curve. If we would have intersected it and cut it back, this edge would have ended up wavy. And now it's a super smooth curve. And so as a result, this curve and this curve is really smooth as well. So um, it's getting a little bit long. I'm going to cut this into two videos because I'm also, I have a plugin called GW3D that uh, lives up here that has some really nice surfacing features uh, that I use all the time. And I'll show you how to build this with um, uh, GW3D features as well.